Hello, this is Sarima with uh, doing qualitative research for first timers. In this session, I would like to share some tips on how to uh, collect uh, in-depth interview data. Now, have you ever wondered why interview data in journal articles seem in-depth and detailed, and yet when you do your own interview, you found that you only uh, gather very little data. Your respondents seem to be responding in short words or in short phrases or single words. Um, and you kind of draw a conclusion that they are not interested in, in participating in your research. Well, maybe you are right, maybe you are not so quite right. Let's explore this uh, and find out what, may, what could be the reasons for such a lack of enthusiasm among your participants. Let's look at this example. Now, as you can see here, this is a sample uh, interview transcript, which I have adapted from uh, original transcripts. What do you think of this interview? Does it look okay to you? Well, at first glance, it may seem to follow uh, suggestions for doing um, semi-structured interview qualitative research but when you examine the data closely and when you try to analyze do thematic analysis you will find that uh, there aren't enough data for you to start with um, the responses that you get are very aren't very rich and detailed that is how you can improve your interview and generate meaningful in-depth data you can probe you can exercise wait time, you can observe some ethical guidelines, and you can uh, remind yourself to be, uh, as a researcher, that you are a human instrument. Okay, let's begin with probing. Now let's look at Jen's response to the first question about what do you think about today's children's social behaviour. The response from Jen is, they are just terrible. Now are you going to just let Jen uh, off the hook by not explaining what she means. If I were the interviewer, I would uh, uh, come up with a few questions just to get Jen to explain what she means by terrible. Just saying terrible doesn't help to explain how bad it is. I mean, as a researcher, I cannot assume to know what Jen means. I cannot use my common sense to interpret what Jen's, Jen means. I need tangible data and in interview, tangible data comes in the form of the verbal responses that the participant gives. So when Jen says they are just terrible, it doesn't give much information. It's just terrible. So you need to probe by asking questions such as what do you mean that children's uh, social behavior is terrible? That's another one way to ask. Perhaps you can also engage Jen in giving examples, specific examples, about what she means by their behaviour being terrible. Let's explore the second uh, response from Jen. This is in response to the question, why do you think social behaviour is terrible? Jen responses, they don't know how to respect others' rights. Okay. If you look at this transcript, the researcher obviously did not do anything with that. Maybe assuming that she understands. Maybe she's having seen children, she assumes that she understands what Jen is saying. But as a researcher, this is not enough. You've got to ask the question, maybe something like, could you explain what you mean that they do not know how to respect others' rights? So you need to explore that. Now the last question or the last response when the researcher asks what do you think can be done to overcome the problem Jen says they need to be educated now some of my students actually stop at that point and say thank you that leaves very little for you to analyze what themes are you going to develop with just need to be educated that is too general so as a researcher this is the opportunity for you to probe by maybe asking questions like, what are your suggestions, Jen? What would you suggest? Who should be doing the uh, educating uh, 
what sort of education should the children get? Where, what, how? You can ask all the WH questions to get Jen to talk. Now, the second tip in doing uh, depth interviewing is to use wait time. Wait time is a very important step in, in generating answers. Uh, as researchers, we may be eager to keep up with time, uh, and so we tend to rush the participant through the questions. This is not a good idea, actually. You need to be able to give time to the participant to think, to think about how to respond, to recollect information from past experiences. And, uh, and the way you give time to them is maybe just by keeping silence or simply by saying uh-huh or just asking the question could you elaborate what do you mean so these are the signals that you can give to indicate that you're expecting more uh, from Jen than just simple short answer now the third tip and this is very important actually this is to observe some ethical guidelines in relation to interviewing people. As you would have known, in order to invite people to participate in your study, the first thing that you would have to do is to seek permission, seek informed consent, seek agreement that they would participate. Now, in doing so, you need to discuss with them what the research is about, how you're going to protect their privacy, uh, how this is going to be uh, the information going to be used um, will they will your uh, will your data collection impact them in any way how many times will you carry out the interview how long is the interview will you reveal the identity all, all these questions need to be uh, discussed with your participant so that they feel safe that you are not doing uh, this research to implicate them in any way um, so when the participants trust you trust that you are genuine that this is for research purposes and you will only report them in uh, by not identifying their identity or their organization then they will be largely uh, lentary in, in responding the last uh, another thing that you can do is also to keep to natural keep things natural and informal if you're interviewing somebody about Eng learning English uh, you are asking in English to a person who is not comfortable speaking English then you will not get a lot of data so you have to rethink if you are familiar with that person's language then you might want to consider speaking in that person's language or at least allow for code switching so for instance, if uh, you're studying about learning English, but your respondents are mostly Malay-speaking participants or Chinese-speaking participants, and they're not very fluent in English and not comfortable speaking English, then you could speak to them in their language, either in Malay or Chinese or whatever the mother tongue is. So that can alleviate any sense of nervousness, any sense of wanting to look smart saying it in the correct grammar way. You need to understand your participants will only uh, be honest with you when they feel that their, va their point of view are highly va uh, valued. If they feel that you are someone with authority, then they would probably think that you want to hear all the nice things and you will just um, fabricate things just to please you. The point is you are not asking the participants to please you. The qualitative researcher, your task is to get to the truth from their perspective. Now the last tip for today is to understand the idea of researcher, a qualitative researcher as a human instrument. As a human instrument, very you are not a paper survey. A survey cannot respond to the temperature misunderstandings to observations and so on but as a human instrument when doing your interview <clears throat> you can adjust the surrounding you can ask uh, you can simplify your question you can repeat your question 
or you can rephrase and you yourself can uh, eliminate this sense of authority by making the interview less formal when you do all these tips and probably more chances are you will be getting a lot of data and that's all for now uh, i hope these tips will help you in the in-depth interview as you would hope for and thank you and we'll see you in another session on qualitative research